In Calculus 1, you have seen how to calculate various kinds of limits, um, and in particular, undetermined kind of limits. But this only worked in particular cases, and now we want to see a more systematic way to deal with this kind of limits. So what I mean by undetermined limits are things like that. Let's say we look for the limit as x is approaching 1 of ln of x divided by x minus 1. The top ln of x approaches ln of 1, which is 0, and the bottom, x minus 1, approaches 0 as well. So we have an undetermined form of the type 0 over 0. In calculus 1, you have seen how to lift this indetermination in various cases. For instance, if you have a quotient of two polynomials, the fact that they are both 0 for the same value of x means there is a common factor. So you can factor both top and bottom, cancel the common factor, and leave the indetermination that way. But in this case, for instance, with ln of x, there is nothing to factor, and what you've seen in Calc 1 would not apply. Similarly, uh, if you consider this limit, when you plug x equals 0 at the top, you get 0 plus sine of 0, which is 0, and at the bottom, 0. So you have, again, a uh, undetermined form of the type 0 over 0, and again, factoring techniques or using conjugates or these kind of things do not apply here. Here is a case that uh, you learned how to deal with in Calculus 1. When you plug x equals 0, you get root of 1, which is 1, minus 1, so 0 at the top, and 0 at the bottom. So again, undetermined form of the type 0 over 0. This one, you have seen how to deal with it. You can multiply top and bottom by the conjugate, in other words, root of 1 plus x plus 1. At the top, you would get 1 plus x minus 1, so just x. At the bottom, the conjugate times x. The x cancels out and you end up with 1 over root of 1 plus x, which has, um, which, I'm sorry, <coughs> um, 1 over root of 1 plus x plus 1, uh, which gives you 1 half at 0. But we want to find a systematic way to deal with these three types of things. So um, we want to do away with the ad hoc techniques like uh, using the conjugate or factoring or this type of things and have something that also applies to um, situations where we didn't have a tool so far to calculate these limits. Another kind of indet in indetermined limit is um, when the top and the bottom go to infinity. For instance here the limit when x is approaching infinity of x squared minus 1 over 2x squared minus 1 the top goes to infinity, the bottom goes to infinity. In that particular case, you've seen again in Calc 1 how to deal with this. Uh, the top and the bottom have the same degree, they are both polynomials. You've seen that in that case, the limit at infinity is a quotient of the leading coefficients, in that case, 1 over 2. Um, but formally, it's infinity over infinity, and so um, it can be decided easily in that case for two polynomials, but let's say for something like that, if you look at the limit of ln of x divided by x when x goes to infinity, top and bottom go to infinity, and now we don't have um, we don't have a general result for that. So this rule of de l'hôpital, which is the uh, title of this section, uh, is about giving a general principle to deal with all of these examples and more. So let's turn to the statement. The context is going to be to take two functions, uh, which are going to be the top and the bottom in the undetermined limit, that are differentiable near A, except possibly at A. What that means is they're differentiable on an open interval centered at A, but possibly not at A. Um, we want g prime of x to be non-zero near A, except possibly at A, and um, we're going to assume that we have an undetermined form of the type 0 over 0, in other words, the limit of f at A and the limit of g at A are both 0, or we have an undetermined form of the type infinity over infinity, so both limits at A are infinite. Then, the conclusion is that we can 
um, evaluate this limit by observing that the limit, this undetermined limit f over g at a, is the same as the limit at a of f prime over g prime. And that's going to be the case <coughs> whether the limit of f prime over g prime is a finite number or is infinite. So the first case when the both limits are zero corresponds to the undetermined limits zero over zero. The second one corresponds to undetermined limits infinity over infinity. Another remark about this result is that this A where we consider the limits uh, could be infinite. We could we could have a version of the statement for A is positive infinity or for A is negative infinity. And we can have versions of this statement for one-sided limits. So replacing all instances of A with A plus or A minus. Now let's go back to the examples we've seen in the first slide. We've already observed that the assumption that uh, the limit of the top and the bottom is the same and is they're both zero or both infinity are satisfied in each one of these cases. So we know that the uh, conditions are satisfied because we're taking quotients of differentiable functions each time. So for the first case, uh, if we apply the rule of De L'Hôpital, uh, what this says is that this limit at one of this quotient is the same as the limit at one of the quotient of the derivatives. And the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, derivative of x minus 1 is 1, so we get the limit of 1 over x divided by 1, so just of 1 over x. And the limit at 1 of 1 over x is 1. In the second case, I have again a quotient of differentiable functions, undetermined 0 over 0, I can apply the rule of de l'hôpital, and it tells me that this limit is the same as the limit of the quotient of the derivatives of top and bottom. Derivative of the top in this case is 2 plus cosine x, the bottom is 1, and the limit at 0 of 2 plus cosine x is 2 plus cosine 0, which is 1, so we obtain 3. For the third one, again, we already have verified the assumptions um, for the rule of de l'hôpital, so applying it, we get that the limit is the same as the limit of the quotient of the derivatives. Derivative of root of 1 plus x minus 1 just 1 over 2 root of 1 plus x, derivative of x is 1, so we just get the limit at 0 of 1 over 2 root of x plus 1, which is 1 half. Then we add an example where um, the limit was undetermined of the form infinity over infinity, and in that case we know what we should expect. Uh, we should obtain 1 half. If we apply the rule of de l'hôpital, we have the limit of the quotient of the derivatives, derivative of the top is 2x, of the bottom is 4x, so we get in fact the limit of 2x over 4x, which is in fact the constant function 1 half, and so the limit is 1 half, as expected. In the case of ln of x over x, both go to infinity, so we can apply the rule of de l'hôpital, we obtain the limit of the derivative of ln of x, that's 1 over x, divided by derivative of x, which is 1, so we obtain the limit at infinity of 1 over x, which is 0. Now to prove the rule of de l'hôpital, uh, we're going to need a generalized version of the mean value CRM that is often referred to as Cauchy mean value CRM. And uh, for that result, uh, we take two functions that are continuous on a closed interval and differentiable on the open interval, and we assume that uh, the function g um, as a derivative that is non-zero on the open interval a, b, and doesn't take the same values at the endpoints. Then the conclusion is that there is some point uh, between a and b where f prime of c divided by g prime of c is the quotient f of b minus f of a divided by g of b minus g of a. Now, this is a generalized version of the usual mean value CRM because the usual mean value CRM is a case where g of x is x. In that case, of course, g prime is not zero. We don't have the same value at the endpoints. And g prime of c is always one. And uh, g of b minus g of a is just b minus a. So what we get is that there is a c such that f prime of c 
is f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a, in other words, the average, average rate of change of f over the interval a, b. So, in calculus 1, you have proved the regular mean value theorem, and uh, because we're going to need that, I want to outline the proof for this Cauchy mean value theorem, and this is a very similar type of proof. Uh, essentially, you use an auxiliary function to which you apply roll theorem, and the fact that the derivative is zero somewhere gives you um, the needed condition. In that case, um, the function we're going to consider as an auxiliary function is uh, h of x defined by f of x minus f of a minus this um, coefficient f of b minus f of a divided by g of b minus g of a, which should be the quotient of the derivatives that we are seeking, multiplied by g of x minus g of a. If you plug a in this function, you get f of a minus f of a at the beginning, and then g of a minus g of a multiplied by something else, so we get zero. Similarly, when we plug x equal b, we get f of b minus f of a, and then minus f of b minus f of a multiplied by g of b minus g of a divided by itself. So we end up with f of b minus f of a minus itself, so we get zero. And the function h, h uh, is defined as the function f, which is assumed to be continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval, minus a constant plus another constant times g of x minus g of a. So if both f and g are continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval, so is the function h. Therefore, h has the same value at the endpoints as this continuity and differentiability condition, and therefore, the theorem of Hall applies to H on that interval to the effect that there is some C in the open interval AB where the derivative of H is zero. But if you look at the derivative of H, it's F prime minus G prime times this coefficient F of B minus F of A divided by G of B minus G of A. So when you look at what happens at C when H prime of C is zero, you get that F prime of C divided by G prime of C is the um, the um, quantity that we are looking for, f of b minus f of a divided by g of b minus g of a. With this in mind, we can prove the rule of the L'Hopital. And um, we're going to just do the case where the limit of f is equal to the limit of g is equal to 0, and a is a finite number. The other cases could be taken care of in a similar fashion. Let's call L the limit of the quotient f prime over g prime, and we want to show that the limit of f over g is also L. We're going to introduce continuous extensions of f and g at A uh, by defining capital F to be equal to f everywhere but at A, and at A we define capital F to be zero, and similarly for G, capital G coincides with G everywhere but at A, and at A is defined by zero. Because the limit of F and G at A are zero, what we are doing here is really uh, extending, taking an extension of F and G by continuity at A, so we get functions that are continuous at A. That means that if we take an X, for instance, greater than A, and this capital F and capital G are differentiable on the open interval AX and continuous on the closed interval AX. That's because everywhere but at A, they coincide with the function little f and little g that have the required conditions. And at A, which is the only place where we have potentially a problem for little f and little g, we fixed it. Um, we get continuity of uh, capital F and capital G. So that means that we can apply this um, Cauchy's version of the mean value CRM to capital F and capital G to the effect that there is some number C between A and X such that capital F prime of C divided by capital G prime of C is capital F of X minus capital F of A divided by capital G of X minus capital G of A. By definition, capital F of A and capital G of A are both zero, so we obtain just capital F of X divided by capital G of X. 
One basic observation is that if x is approaching a, and of course here we, are, we made the assumption that x is greater than a, so x is approaching a from the right, then c, which is a number between a and x, which of course depends on x, is going to also approach a from the right. That means that if I look at the limit at a from the right of f of x over g of x, well, because um, little f and capital F coincide everywhere but at a, little g and capital G coincide everywhere but at a, I get the same limit. And according to what I have obtained by Cauchy's mean value CRM, this limit of capital F over capital G is can be rewritten as a limit as c is approaching a plus of f prime of c divided by g prime of c, where c of course depends on x. But now uh, f pr capital F prime coincides with little f prime and capital G prime with little g prime, so we get uh, the limit at a plus of f prime over g prime, which is a this is for the limit from the right. Of course, we can do exactly the same thing from the left and obtain the same result. And we can do um, use similar arguments for other cases for the rule of the L'Hopital.